Alrighty, people. <clears throat> this is a decent way the people news. Alright. Uh, this video is without prejudice or and without recourse. Okay, I'm going to stand on uh, UCC 1 308 all rights reserved. Okay. Alright. Um, I'm not an attorney, so this is not going to be any type of legal advice. It's my opinions and my opinions only. Okay, it's a learning video, y'all. Uh, to uh, no longer just, well, uh, see straight ahead, you know, always look around you to be able to protect yourself by any means necessary and your family. All right, um, there's always these uh, babbles going on around us, right? And they just want you to comply and say you understand things that when they say they're speaking babble, okay? And then they want to just say, hey, you're speaking babble. You need to see a psychiatrist. So they flip it. And hence this First Amendment audit. Always cops try to flip everything and make, make them the victim. All right? Same things with courts. Okay? Um, I'm not going to get too much further uh, with my deal. Uh, this is going to be, uh, give or take 18, 19 minutes. So this is going to be a pretty long video. All right? Let's go. So we've put together a document that I think has all of the stuff on it that you guys need to put on your document. Um, so we'll start here. Doesn't really matter if it's child support or if it's just the state. If you're dealing with a commissioner or a magistrate or whatever the hell they call these fake judges, here in Salt Lake, they call them administrative law judges, ALJs. Um, they're clerks, okay? They're not real judges. And we're going to go through a bunch of court cases and uh, precedent that might help you out. So let's look at this here. First of all, this is if you double click, you can put in your header your certified mail number. Okay, and then you just double click again, and it goes in there. And that is something that is important in all your documents so that you can prove that you mailed to it because they are going to ignore you, okay? So this was just real quick. We put the date, uh, the first attempt. So you're gonna probably send them special appearance, validation of debt letters, void judgments and why you're going to use federal rules of civil procedure you're going to use everything but they're just going to ignore you okay so in most administrative processes it's just like the wizard of oz it's click your heels together three times dorothy and you can go home okay so three attempts and then you can take them to court and assumingly uh, you know, if you follow the administrative procedure and the process, if they don't uh, verify and send you the documentation that you want and they just ignore you because they're ignorant and they're arrogant, uh, you should be able to go in and get it dismissed by either small claims or the regular municipal court that you go to. So let's look at this real quick. So first of all, you will put your name, address, zip code, email, phone number, whatever. That's who it's from, of course. And then you put the child support thief, their mailing address and info that's gotta be on there. So who it's from, who it's to. Uh, you put your case number and the judge, okay? And your attempt number, okay? So the second time you send this out with a different mailing number, you will go in and you will just change that to a two, okay? Real simple, okay? This is a Word document, and you can get it from me if you want, uh, but let's go through it. You would put your motion to dismiss or your motion to vacate or judicial notice or whatever you're going to title this. This is a void judgment, okay? So you would put, you know, motion to vacate, uh, void judgment, okay, or whatever, or whatever other heading you want to put on here, you know, to the state of Wyoming, 
you know, blah, 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 district court, okay? So you put that in there, and uh, you guys, if you know anything about Word documents, you can just go in here and, okay, you can just go in here and you go to home, and your little screen pops down, and you can move it around, put it over there, you can put it over here, whatever you want to do, you want to center it, whatever. Okay, so that's going to say your third district court of the state of whatever the fuck, okay? So, <clears throat> let's see what this says. This is a notice of void judgment. I mean, my, myself, also known as, and then you put your name in, a man living, well, if you're a woman, then you put a woman living on the land without the corporation called the state of whatever, okay, whatever state you're in. Do you hereby provide a notice of void judgment by declaration as follows? I am not under your corporate jurisdiction and say the following, okay? Whenever a judge or a fake commissioner, magistrate, ALJ, administrative law judge, whatever yours is called in your state, is dealing with a statute like your state government code or your state penal code or your state code of civil procedure, you become a clerk working for the prosecutor, okay? Judges who become involved in enforcement of mere statutes, civil or criminal in nature or otherwise, act as mere clerks of the involved agency, okay? And that comes from Casey Davis, Administrative Law, Chapter 1. And if you want to, you know, cut and paste that, you know, you can do this, okay? And then you can go to Google, okay? can right click on it and copy that and paste it into your browser and that'll come up and you can read the whole thing but that, and that goes with all these okay so is it a, it is an accepted rule not only the state courts but a federal courts that when a judge is enforcing administrative law they are described as mere extensions of the administrative agency for superior reviewing purposes as a ministerial, ministerial clerk for an agency, okay? So in other words, they're a clerk, they're not a judge. Administrative law, administrative law judge is not a judge, okay? They call themselves judges, they're not judicial, okay? So when you go in front of a magistrate or a commissioner, they are not a judge and they cannot make judicial decisions. When acting to enforce a statute and its subsequent amendments to the present date, the judge of a municipal court is acting as an administrative officer and not in a judicial capacity. Okay, that's Thompson versus Smith, Keller versus PE. Okay, you can look them up. What's that? FRC versus GE, that's the United States Supreme Court right there. Okay, when a judge is operating as a clerk, masquerading as a judge, he cannot, let me change this real quick, because it's not a capital, it's a lower, because it's just a, just a regular old peon. He cannot do anything judicial. And if he attempts to do something judicial, it is a nullity. And this is Burns versus Superior Court. Okay, you can look that one up. Once jurisdiction is challenged, it must be proven. So this is another thing I didn't mention. You'll notice everything's labeled or uh, numbered not labeled. Um, so this talks about judicial, okay? This talks about judicial and judicial capacity. Does not act judicially, okay? And then we get into jurisdiction. Once jurisdiction is challenged, it must be proven. Here's all the case laws for that, okay? Number three, the defendant, that would be you in the case, has previously served notice. Now, I... <clears throat> It helps to notice to write this down if you can see it uh, or put it on a big screen TV or something like that and read it, okay? Now, attorneys and all that kind of stuff, when you challenge jurisdiction of the courts and all that, these people keep saying sovereign citizens out there. And over and over and over, I've told you guys there is case law that everybody wants to go by saying 
once you challenge jurisdiction, it must be proven. It's not a sovereign citizen crap, people. It's a law crap. <laughs> upon, okay, you would put your child support agency, try to get their name, whatever, and their superiors, and have both ignored all attempts to validate their authority to bother me. And the defendant filed challenges to jurisdiction, probably by special appearance. Okay, if you've gotten paperwork from anybody out there, it's probably in there somewhere. And these individuals have not answered one word or even attempted to prove jurisdiction. Okay? For in order to prove jurisdiction, there must be a contract. Okay? It is impossible to prove jurisdiction exists absent a substantial nexus with the state, a contract with the state, such as voluntary subscription to a license. Okay, now we've been through this before. If you've got a driver's license, if you've got a birth certificate, if you've got a marriage license, okay, you're in contract. But part of that is going through the terms and conditions and full disclosure and threat, duress, and coercion. That's a whole other video. You know, we've been through all that. You didn't know that getting married gave the state an interest in your child. Okay, so you can bring that up if you want. In order to prove jurisdiction, there must be a contract. No corporation has standing to do anything in court. So if it's, you know, the state of New York, state of Utah, state of California, okay, against, and they're the plaintiff, and you're the defendant, what does this say? My opinion is, and long has been, that the mayor and Alderman City Corporation or the president or the directors of a bank or the president and directors of a railroad company and of similar corporations are the true parties that sue and are sued as trustees and representatives of the constantly changing stockholders. A corporation, therefore, being not a natural person, a man or a woman, but a mere creature of the mind, invisible and intangible, cannot be a citizen of a state or of the United States and cannot fall within the terms or the power of the above mentioned article and can therefore neither plead nor be impleaded in the courts of the United States. Okay, so what does that say? It says, in other words, the state of New York, Utah, California, whatever, is a fiction. Okay, doesn't exist. They cannot file charges against you because they don't exist except in name only, and they cannot bring a man into court. Okay? A judge ceases to sit as a judicial officer because the governing principles of administrative law provide that courts are prohibited from substituting their evidence, testimony, record, arguments, and rationale for that of the agency. Additionally, courts are prohibited from substituting their judgments for that of the agency, okay? So they have to be third party. They have to be non-biased. They cannot be part of the system. And we all know that when you go into that freaking courtroom, the cops, the lawyers, the prosecutors, the clerks, the judges, everybody works for the state. So how do you get a third party intervener adjudicator to oversee your case. You can't, so the whole thing's void. The clerk masquerading as a judge committed treason and seditious conspiracy pursuant to your own state federal codes because when a judge acts where he or she does not have jurisdiction to act, the judge is engaged in treason. Okay? There's the United States versus Will, Cones versus Virginia. Okay? An unconstitutional act is not law, it confers no rights, it imposes no duties, affords no protection, it creates no office, and is in legal contemplation as inoperative as though it had never been passed. Okay, Shelby versus Norton. An unconstitutional law is void and has no law and is as no law. An offense created by it is not a crime. No one is bound to obey an unconstitutional law and no courts are bound to enforce it. Okay, that's from American Jurisprudence. When a clerk masquerading as a judge deliberately uses invisible contracts to enslave a man, he walks away from any immunity he may enjoy and becomes personally liable. 
okay? So you can sue them in their individual capacity because what they're doing is not judicial and you can go after them in their individual capacity. The decision of this kangaroo so-called court is Brutum Fulham, Fulman, which is an empty noise, an empty threat, a judgment void on its face, which is in legal effect, no judgment at all, okay? Dollar versus Pratt, okay? Corpus Juris Secundum, Black's Law Dictionary, okay? You can't argue with this stuff. All of your assumed authority is under color of law, okay? Here's all the stuff about color of law. We've been there. Stop it. You can look at it, okay? The clerk masquerading as a judge knows that it is my right to have a neutral and detached judge, but instead chose to conspire with, then you would put the child support agency, the district court, the prosecutor, the child support bitch that's calling you every week saying, where's my money, and thereby participated in a fraud and a nullity. Okay? It's a fundamental right of a party to have a neutral and detached judge to preside over the proceedings. Do you think these people are neutral and detached? Hell no. They're all getting paid by the state. It's all void. Okay? Now, they assaulted the defendant with their corporate codes and statutes, and the defendant was served hundreds of documents on them, and their superiors stating that the defendant is not interested in participating in their commercial transaction, and -and so-and-so is their accomplice. Okay, so you put the lady or the guy or whoever, okay, or child support agency is their accomplice, okay. They assaulted the defendant with their criminal corporation, okay. This says that uh, same thing as above, that it's not a real person, it's just a corporation, okay. So you put so-and-so is paid directly from the state of whatever. Therefore, you have an interest in this case and cannot oversee the case. Henceforth, you are fired and your administrative clerical decision is void. Okay? For all of the foregoing reasons, all of the orders, judgments, and decisions in this case are absolute nullities and void ab initio, which is void from the beginning. Where there is no jurisdiction, there is no judge. I'm going to pause that right there uh, right quick. So the 4D is... uh a contract from the federal government to the state governor, government to the county government. All right, so everybody is involved in there. There's conflict of interest against you. In fact, everybody in there is conflict of interest against the whole ex-family or family, right? Your ex-wife, your kids, and you. So all these attorneys that you get is against you. The magistrate in there, the clerk, is against you. It's all conflict of interest. Alright? And, did I say it, we would add to the intent to uh, rape, pillage, and and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, Because that's what they're doing. The trusts are passing upon your rights. Alright? There is no such things as a law that you must pay child support. Okay? There's no law. There is no law that you gotta pay uh, income tax. And yet, nobody asks questions, and they still do it. Avoid judgment is one which, from its inception, was a complete nullity and without legal effect. Void judgment is one that has no legal force or effect whatever. It is an absolute nullity. That's City of Lufkin versus McVicker. Avoid judgment insofar as it purports to be a pronouncement of court is absolute nullity. It's Thompson versus Thompson. Void order may be attacked either directly or collateral at any time. Okay. Avoid judgment is one which from its inception... Almost up there also. Some of these uh, things and writings he does, even if you copy it, uh, all of it, if you take some out, put some back in, the same document actually fit for tickets. Any magistrate, you know, your first five uh, for the cop watch, your first amendment violations and all that kind of stuff, fourth amendment violations. ...is and forever continues to be absolutely null and without legal efficacy, ineffectual, to bind the parties or to support a right, okay? Not every person 
Not every action, excuse me, by any judge is an exercise of his judicial function. It is not a judicial function for a judge to commit an intentional tort, even though the tort occurs in the courthouse when a judge acts as a trespasser of the law. When a judge does not follow the law, he loses subject matter jurisdiction and the judge's orders are void. Okay? So, we got a whole bunch more here. These here, if you look right here, these are all maxims of law. These are hard to say. Okay? Out of fraud, action no, uh, no action arises. So, fraud from the beginning. Okay, once a fraud, always a fraud. Things invalid from the beginning cannot be made valid by subsequent act. Okay? A thing void from the beginning does not become valid by lapse of time. Okay? It's a bunch of these maxims of law. Okay, and everything these child support pigs. Okay, what is pig? Uh, let's look at pig. Oh, I skipped it. I skipped it. I skipped it. Where is it? Okay, there it is. Sorry, I went right by that. What's pig? Pig is an acronym which stands for persons in government. Okay, so. When you talk about pigs, you're talking about people in the government that are trying to steal your money, okay, for their own monetary gain. So everything these pigs do, or these uh, administrative law judges, or these commissioners do, or pigs do, is a fraud and a lie, and they get their puppets to help them with their assault, kidnappings, false imprisonments, and thefts of property for their own monetary gain. Fraud and deceit may arise from silence where there is a duty to speak. Fraud may be committed by failure to speak when the duty of speaking is imposed as much as by speaking falsely. So, tell me, sir, did the child support agency, did you, commissioner so-and-so, tell me that you were not a real judge? Did I give up any of my God-given rights to a jury trial? Did I give up my right to raise my child as I see fit? Was I coerced into some unseen contract with the state? Can you prove in a court of law that you and your company have an interest in my property? Can you and your company prove in a court of law that you can seize property without a warrant? There's a couple of uh, Bible passages, and here's the bottom. Okay, this is where the notary goes. You sign, non-domestic, non-assumpset. You always put your zip code in brackets because if you don't, then you're admitting that you're in federal jurisdiction. Uh, if you use a zip code, you are in federal jurisdiction, and they can book your ass. LS, what does LS mean? That's living soul. Okay, so you're a man. Sign this in front of a notary, get it notarized, and uh, good luck. Anyway, uh, this is a learning video, y'all. Uh, there's Supreme Courts and all that that you may take to heart. Um, write down and kind of do as you wish, right? Uh, I'm not giving legal advice, okay? I'm not an attorney. Um, you know, if you decide to proceed forward on something like this particular way, you must start acting like you're of age and majority, and I can't even say acting. You must become age and majority, okay? And quit acting as an adult okay um, anyway um, again it's, it's thinking outside the box y'all okay um, you know if you just we keep doing the exact same thing we're not getting results you know somebody's gonna have a small benefit but somebody's also gonna lose so uh, let's try not to lose all right, this will be the people news. Till next time, bye y'all.